Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise to now, uh, tonight to speak on the appropriation bill, and I'm not sure if this is my 15th or 16th appropriation uh, speech that I've made in this place. And I always like to try and start on a positive, and, uh, and so I will um, commend the government uh, on the bulk billing increase for GPs. I think that was a positive thing to do. Um, that's the positive bits out of the way. Um, uh, but the, the other issue, and I've heard other contributions on this appropriation uh, speech about the changes to distribution priority areas. And uh, members who live in Perry Urban and uh, uh, areas close to capital city saying how good it is now uh, that we've got doctors because of the change to distribution priority areas. And well, good on them, except I know where they came from. They came from regional Australia. And I know the week that that policy was announced, Western Health lost six doctors out of, uh, out of uh, towns in, uh, <clears throat> in Western New South Wales. And so this is the, uh, this is the issue we confront, is the lack of understanding uh, around regional Australia. And uh, <clears throat> we, you know, we, we uh, hear a lot about uh, support for The Voice and, and, and our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, but at the same time we have policies that are taking away the services that service those towns. And it's like the good, you know, good news, more money for parents with people in aged care, good luck if you've got a place. But if you're at Mungandai, uh, there's not a facility. Uh, and it's, and, and the, the ability to actually get funds to build a facility so those younger families that have moved back to try and uh, make their life uh, in a rural town like Mungandai uh, actually have somewhere to send their kids. because. One thing the pandemic has shown us is that you can work remotely. And so what we've seen, um, particularly in some of the farm families, is that one of the partners, or both of them, can actually run a business from the farm uh, and, uh, uh, and work remotely, but they've got to have some way to look after the kids. And so while um, the, uh, the extra money for parents for, for, for uh, childcare uh, on the surface looks good if you haven't got a place to put that child, uh, and that's a problem. I've got a staff member in Broken Hill who wants to come back from maternity leave but can't find a place for her child to go. And so uh, that's, uh, that's a, an issue. But I think uh, one of the concerns I have uh, with, this, uh, with the budget is that because the minister has uh, called a review into major infrastructure projects, they've largely been pulled out of the picture. So it's very hard to get a, a clear picture of what's happening uh, uh, with infrastructure projects. And uh, uh, you know, projects like uh, roads to recovery, uh, 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 roads of strategic importance, uh, local roads community infrastructure, um, all these uh, uh, programs that uh, are building roads uh, to help the productivity of this nation, uh, and now uh, there's that degree of uncertainty. Roads of strategic importance has been a, a, a great program, and roads like the connection between Canamble uh, and, uh, and Turrawina, access for people uh, at Canamble uh, to the east, produce that can come through uh, into markets in the Hunter, um, uh, tourists coming through the Warren Bungles, going out to, uh, through Canamble, uh, up to Lightning Ridge and into Queensland, not having to travel on a, uh, a, a dangerous dirt road. Uh, the roads are strategic importance, terrific for that. You know, and even roads like the County Boundary Road uh, uh, up uh, near Cropper Creek, where there'll be connection for high producing grain farms, having a all weather uh, safe road for higher mass vehicles so that there's a, an increase uh, in productivity. But I, I guess one of the the things that concerns me most uh, in infrastructure is inland rail. Now, inland rail, most of the funding is off budget, okay, but there are some things in the budget that were in the budget um, that are associated. And a, a great example of that is the grade separations, uh, the money that was there for grade separations. So, uh, where the railway line's coming through, uh, a grade separation is you have a, an overpass generally, sometimes it's rail over road, but it's mostly road over rail, that provides a safe interface between busy roads uh, and the rail. Now, that funding has been pushed forward uh, into 
you know, off budget pushed forward into future years. Is that being pushed forward uh, uh, to onto the never never because uh, the project is uh, is is in jeopardy? But the lack of understanding of what this project is. Basically, the inland rail is to provide an efficient uh, connection between Melbourne and Brisbane for intermodal freight. I think there's a, a, a B double goes up the Newell Highway through Dubbo every 70 seconds at the moment. Uh, that's increasing exponentially year on year on year, and it's not uh, uh, it's not sustainable. The inland rail uh, would take a lot of that freight off the highway. Those that are concerned about reducing our emissions, uh, one train takes 150 trucks off the road, uh, reduces uh, the emissions by thousands, millions of tonnes of carbon a year, uh, and that's just the basic part of it. As well as that, uh, the grain producers, cotton producers, uh, along the way will have a more efficient, cheaper access uh, to ports. But more importantly, it will be a catalyst for other industries to grow. And while the uncertainty is there, you've got to understand it's not just the rail project. So in Moree, we've got the special activation precinct, where the, the New South Wales government's already put in $300 million into that project. Local businesses are planning how to take advantage of that. Horticulture is looking to come and take advantage. And once again, Moree with an Indigenous population of about 22 per cent, permanent well-paid jobs in those areas, to me, that is, that, that is empowering people. That is giving them a future. When, when a family has a job, um, a lot of the other issues that um, they deal with fall away. A lot of the social issues fall away. And so the, the double standards we see where we withdraw um, projects that employ uh, local Aboriginal people on one hand while espousing virtue uh, of, uh, of care on the other. And, uh, and so, um, you know, if you go right down the rail line, uh, the, the inland port at Narrabri, uh, with the potential to be connected to gas from the, uh, from the Pilliga gas field, the, the possibilities are endless of what can be manufactured. And with our cities now you know, choked up, difficulty getting large mass vehicles into those industrial areas of the city, and the competition between industrial land and residential land, it makes perfect sense to move a lot of that industry out into regional areas, grow those communities with the um, efficient connection to rail, not only to the port, but to every capital city in Australia. The inland rail, for the first time in the history of this country, would have every capital city connected by a standard gauge railway. And, uh, and that's, that's all. To have the minister talk about this as a National Party vanity project, to talk about pork barrelling, this is the greatest piece of uh, nation-building infrastructure that we've seen in this country for the last 100 years. This is like the harbour bridge for regional Australia. And it's been treated as a political pawn. Uh, and I can tell you, um, what do you say to the younger person who's gone to the finance company, bought a truck, a couple of side tipping trailers to go on behind because they believed there's a project that was going to be going on for the next four or five years? They were told that, told that by me, as a matter of fact. Uh, so you can imagine where we sit on that. What are they going to tell their finance company when they say, well, the project's under a cloud at the moment? We're parked up. We thought we were going to go from one to the other to the other. Now we're parked up. What do we do? What about the 40 or 50 Aboriginal people that had the first job for a long time in Moree who are now back on a new start? I mean, what are you going to tell them? They thought that they had a career building railway lines that was going to last for some time, and it is now uh, under a cloud. I'm certainly hoping that it will continue. I'm saying to Minister King, Please come out with some positive messaging about this project. If she's going to knock it on the head, do it today, uh, because the uncertainty is causing an enormous amount of grief uh, in my part of the world. And so, 
um, you know, Deputy Speaker, um, we, we've got to look at regional Australia uh, as servicing, like we, we need to service the area that's actually carrying this country economically. We came through the pandemic uh, because of our experts, exports in minerals, uh, gas and agricultural produce. All those things come from the Parks electorate, from, 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 uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, the raw, raw materials uh, that have been developed for the cleaner, newer economy. Cobalt, lithium, uh, rare earths, all of those things are there, but they need the infrastructure to actually uh, uh, to be developed. Uh, Regional Australia isn't a place to be pitied. It's not a place to be ignored. It's not a place to be derided. Uh, it's, a, it's the future of this country. It's the powerhouse that pays the bills. Uh, and this budget has, quite frankly, uh, ignored, um, uh, ignored regional Australia. Uh, we've had the pharmacists uh, in today, and there was, uh, you know, the, the Prime Minister uh, clearly had been speaking to them, uh, his own pharmacy. But the pharmacists in, uh, in Roselle is probably not at risk compared to the pharmacists at Burke or Warrialda or Brewarrina. Uh, and in many cases, because of the transient nature of, uh, of the doctors coming through, the pharmacist is the, uh, is the constant. And the pharmacist at Burke was telling me that, um, particularly um, uh, with some of the Aboriginal folk out there, uh, would come to him and get a, uh, ask them what their script meant. Uh, because they were the pharmacists were the person that's been there all the time and they can trust and have that relationship with. And so forget the, the politicking. You know, I know that the, the campaign has upset members of the government, but we can't afford to lose our pharmacists. Uh, aged care, and I heard the previous member talk about that, I think the, 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 the money going to paying aged care workers I think is a good thing. I think they deserve it. Uh, they're unsung heroes and I've got the greatest respect. But once again... Uh, you've got to think things through. And saying you're going to have a registered nurse 24-7 when there is no one there to do that. Uh, we, on the 1st of July, we've got aged care facilities in my electorate that are terrified they'll be non-compliant. And they don't know what that's mean. They haven't been told what that means uh, to be um, uh, if, if they can't get an exemption. Some of the smaller towns can get an exemption, but I know it's a real concern... Uh, to Southern Cross Care out at Broken Hill because they are really struggling uh, to uh, to get that uh, uh, to get that certainty of, of having staff there. So, uh, Deputy Speaker, um, uh, I'm happy to work with the government. Minister King has asked me to go on a committee to help uh, a bipartisan committee uh, with regional funding. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, I think it's important that we try and work together as best we can. But I've got to say, I can't hide my disappointment uh, in the way that regional Australia has been treated by this budget. Authorised by Mark Colton, National Party of Australia, Dubbo.